welcome everybody. So let's just go around the room um, and see who's here. Um, so I'm Daniel Pocock. I've, I'm a developer and maintainer of some of the SIP packages. Um, and I helped to get the services up and running at rtc.debian.org. Um. Uh, I'm Dave Steele, a fairly recent developer, and uh, I got an email a year ago for uh, here's your developer credentials, part of the information about RTC. And frankly, I've never been able to get it to work. I think you need to no more than that. Okay, let me just grab a microphone to go around the room. Um, so, here we go. Do you want to run the micro? Do you want to run the microphone around? Do you want to run the microphone around? Yeah. Right, I'm Martin Behrens, and um, user interested in uh, in all RTC programming topics, but uh, have no experience of them yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm Martin. I'm co-maintainer of some XMPP related packages, mainly uh, Gatrim and Prosperity modules. And I'm also a user of the Debian RTC services, mainly their XMPP server. And uh, it does not work very well, so we have to do something about it. Uh, I'm AJ. I have no real connection to the Debian project, but like this seems like an interesting session, and I run my own XMPP server, so yeah. Just I'm Gilliam. I maintain a couple of packages, but nothing to do with uh, RTC. But uh, I do use uh, SIP quite extensively, mostly with Linfon, actually, which is a bit aging. And I'm curious what you have to say here. Also, I never try. I never managed to get the to get the Debian RTC uh, working. So. <laughs> I'm Denver, also known as OSS guy. Um, I developed the uh, Sopranica family of projects, which are um, uh, gateways to the telephone network for both XMPP to do text and picture messaging and for, for voice over SIP. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm kind of interested in how that might, might work with, with what Debian's doing because I'd like to get these things into Debian eventually, but I want to see what's, what's there already so I'm not duplicating work. Hi, I'm Stephen, a uh, long time. XMPP user, I work on Sopranica a little bit, and, and uh, Debacle asked me to come because I also have a lot of experience making our server not get as much spam as it used to. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Devin. Uh, I'm not really connected to RTC or Debian, other way, apart from uh, PHP Madden package in the Debian. Uh, I am here because a few of my friends from last year's Google Summer of Code worked on uh, similar projects in RTC. They could not attend, but I am just looking out for information here. Okay. Hello, I'm Urvika, and I worked on a project Lumicall. So it was under free RTC, and it used uh, SIP for voice and uh, messages. So that is why I'm interested in this talk. Okay, so we have a, a little bit of everything here. Um, it sounded like there was a little bit more interest in XMPP than anything else. Um, does that sound fair? So, so if we start with the XMPP issues, um, so what's the biggest issue with uh, XMPP at the moment? And just grab the microphone when. Yeah, it's spim. So. Spam over instant messaging. Um, yeah, who's got the other microphone there? Yeah, so um, does anyone want to talk about the problem? <laughs> um, 
um, on the Debian RTC mailing list, users complained about getting a lot of spam. Um, I got rid of it by getting anti-spam plugin, but this is obviously a workaround because, um, yeah, uh, fighting fighting spam on the client side is is not the right way to do it. We must solve this problem on our Prosody server. And in theory, XMPP could fight spam much better than email could, but in practice, um, the tools are not so advanced as an email because it's a relatively new problem and affects, of course, fewer users than spam in email. Um, so I, I think uh, there are some ideas we had uh, unfortunately, um, Enrico is not here, but he thought about that on the server side, one could compare um, incoming messages. Uh, if there are many identical messages going in to different users, two users that do not have them in their roster, this is clearly a sign for spam or spin. But there is no software as far as I know, that does such a check. Yeah, so I, my, the server that I administer is obviously a little bit less large uh, than, the, than the Debian server, but, uh, but we've, we've had a lot of problems with this uh, too, historically. Um, and I think there's kind of two, like a two-phase situation that we're in with regards to spim there's like how do we solve the problem right now so that we can at least make the accounts usable for the users right with the technology we have available to us and then there's like the long term you know what what more advanced things that can we do and i think there's a lot of great stuff like uh, the idea that you just mentioned about monitoring on a big server a lot of incoming stuff and and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, upcoming captcha zeps that are starting to get implemented in the clients that are maybe an option. A lot of fun stuff like that. Uh, but right now, the most effective thing I've found personally on our server is uh, just doing like really simple rules-based filtering. Um, and uh, so I have a, so there's a module in for Prosody called uh, Mod Firewall. Uh, that lets you basically write simple rules to either uh, reject, drop, or, or accept uh, incoming stanzas. Um, and you can do just like basically re regexes across. Um, and so I do the two main things are spam trapping. So I have JIDs that, are, that look like real JIDs, but that are you know, not, not for real users. And I publish them. And, the spimmers have picked up some of them, and they, they start sending spim to these addresses. And I know that 100% of all messages to these addresses is spim. Uh, and so I can log that in my log file, and then I can use fail to ban uh, to monitor the log file and, and, and uh, do other things like adding blocks server-wide for just those JIDs that are sending that. So I can say, OK, anyone who sends from this JID is a spimmer, because I know that's all I'm getting from that, right? So that's the, and then, but the, the really, really simplest first thing is just like words, right? Um, blocking any messages that have certain words that aren't from a contact. Because we have the roster, it's very easy to say, okay, as soon as they're on the roster, don't block them. I want to hear, get all their messages. And if they're not on the roster, and that's, this is a thing that's supported in Mod Firewall, so it's not like hypothetical, it's very easy. I, in, in, and uh, then as soon as it, they're not on the, you can be very aggressive, right, with people who aren't on your roster because because they, uh, if they get a message back that says, oh, you block for spam, they can just rephrase to something simpler and say, like, hello, I, I'm not a spammer. Please add me or something, right? Uh, so uh, I mean, a lot of the spam things now say things like spam in the, in the spam, or they'll say advert or promo or the word advert in Russian. Um, uh, well, going, saying everything in Russian is, is going to get us in trouble someday. But, uh, but I, I specifically have a pattern for the word advert in Russian, because I see that in a lot of the Russian spim, that word. Um, and even just the names of the bot networks. XSNDR is one of the big ones. They will often put their own name of their bot network in the spim. Uh, and, and just those like five patterns block, in my experience, like 70% of the spim, which is not, you know, 
not perfect. It doesn't get us at where we want to be, but it, it, goes, it can often take an unusable account and make it at least usable again, right? It's a good first step I've found. I don't know. So I'm, I'm curious, does anyone here know what the Debian XMPP server runs? Like, no, I, I, I just, let me clarify. Like, does anyone know how it's configured? So like, is there any anti-spam on it? Or like, uh, like I just want to get a sense of the problem space, right? Hmm. So d I, am, I make, am I making any sense? It, it's been my impression that there's basically, I mean, it depends on what you consider anti-spam tactics. So uh, dialback is standard on basically every XMPP server, and a lot of them, I think, I don't know if Debian is requiring TLS on server to server now, but probably they are. You don't know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Those are both things that help, but they don't help very much anymore against the new kind of spam, right? Those are the two things that protected us for the last 20 years, um, but they're that the reason we have a problem now is because they're suddenly no longer sufficient. Yeah. So I've just logged into the server. It runs Procity. Yeah, we can uh, just read the config file right now. <laughs> I guess in a sense it's a good thing that it could be interpreted as a good thing that we have a bigger spin problem now. Mm. Well, definitely, because someone is interested. Someone thinks there are enough XMPP users to bother advertising yeah, exactly. to them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually yeah. quite happy, but... Yeah. So that's all the modules that you have, but those are all. Um, so blocking is enabled. So that's like the, the base level, but that's on a per user, right? So each user has to block the spimmers one by one. Uh, it it doesn't. So that's something, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It does not scale. scale. At all. <laughs> yeah. Although, if people on your server have been, if anyone on the server has been doing that, you can look in the, data, for what has been blocked already and maybe seed a blacklist with at least that and say, okay, these look like, you know, spammers that people have already blocked. I don't know. It's a, a thing you might yeah. look at. Uh, so just, just looking at how we get access to this, who is not a Debian developer here? Yeah. So even if you're not a Debian developer, you can get a guest account on Alioth. Who has a guest account on Alioth? Yep. Um, and once you have the, and you can just register for that by yourself, um, it only takes a minute. Once you have that, you can then ask for permission to access this server. Um, if you want to help the RTC team to you know, review it or um, extend it, you, we can also collaborate over um, the email list or IRC, or maybe we can get this configuration into Git. Um, we have to check with DSA. I think they are doing some things with Git. Is anyone familiar with that? Or, um, okay, so so that could be a way to get people more involved in managing this. I was involved in setting it up, um, but my primary activity is development, so I'm not actively checking on this every day. Um, so I would love to have some extra help to to look after the XMPP side of the problem. Um, we actually have multiple services. We have SIP. Um, we have WebRTC, which is based on SIP. And we have XMPP. Um, another thing that could help is if someone was willing to volunteer to be a coordinator for XMPP. Um, and possibly having someone volunteering to be a a coordinator for the operational side of these services so that some of us will focus on the packaging and upstream development and other people um, would focus on the operational issues. Um, so these are um, th just the mi microphone. Okay, so the microphone, yeah. So um, I would volunteer uh, but uh, uh, not alone. <laughs> Not alone. So there should be more people so that also in emergencies there is always someone who can help even if I'm not available. Okay. Uh, I think, isn't Victor also involved? Who is yes. a maintainer of Crossody? Yeah, he's a package maintainer as well. Yeah, but so is he involved in, in the administration side also? Um, he has been. He has been, um, okay. 
But this is something we need to explore because yeah. in any organization, it's good to have one person who is the contact, even if they take holidays sometimes, mm. even if they don't actually do everything themselves, at least they know who to contact. Or um, Because for me, I'm spreading myself too thin if I try to manage all these yes. things. So, so it would be really good to have someone who volunteers to stay on top of prosody um, and that if no one else answers, that person you know, sort of jumps in and so yeah. on. I, I could do that. Yeah. I'm personally very much interested so <laughs> okay. that the service does uh, work and run. So, Okay. Um, no, that would be great. Yeah. So. And then if you could check with Victor what his role is if he's interested in the yeah. operational side or only the packaging side. So um, let's, let's talk the deep details later then in, in Debian yeah. RTC mailing list or RTC uh, yes. uh, um, IRC. Yes, just looking at the lists that we have. Um, so this is on the wiki. So every team has a page on the Debian wiki. Um, so the RTC team has this page. Um, and we have a lot of links. Um, this is the WebRTC portal. Um, this is our Alioth project. Um, this is some documentation about how to set up different soft phones with the services, with both SIP and XMPP. Anybody can add to the documentation. Um, here we have um, an FAQ, which is on the wiki as well. Um, and we have a couple of mailing lists. The Debian-RTC list is intended for the users to ask questions. Um, so other Debian developers who rely on the service. Um, and the other list, the Debian-RTC admin, was intended for discussions between the admins of the XMPP and the SIP and so on. Um, but we can have those discussions on the Debian-RTC list as well because it's not so busy. Um, but if we're having a lot of those discussions, it might be better to have that on, the, on this other list, on Alioth. Um, there's also a bug tracker for issues with the service itself. Um, so these are things we need to enable in the services, um, both SIP and XMPP. So, so there are a lot of different things there. Some of them are wish list items. Um, so anybody can volunteer to help with any of these things, whether you're a developer or not. In fact, a lot of people get involved with things like this before they become a developer. Um, are any of the other developers here familiar with um, sponsoring someone for access to the porting machines? Um, so there's a wiki about this that we can request accounts for people who we know who are helping to organize things. So if that's necessary, we can do that. And the other possibility is that if we can get the configuration files into Git, then people will be able to collaborate through there. And that possibly without having machine access to see the prosody configuration. Um, does that sound like a reasonable way forward? So, okay. Um, is there anything besides the prosody configuration on that machine? I would assume no, right? Yeah, there is a turn server. So if people want to make voice and video calls with XMPP or SIP or WebRTC, they can all use the turn server. The same credentials <coughs> for all of them. Um, so that is related to it, but it's not a dependency for chat. It's only for voice and video. Um, so I guess what I'm asking is, like, how much stuff has to be put into Git? It would seem like just a readme that says install prosody, install the, the whatever turn server package we use, and then, you know, copy two configuration files into slash Etsy, and you have a recreation of the setup. Is that right? No, the, the prosody configuration file itself should probably be in a repository so that when we change it, we put the changes through. Git. Right, that's what I was saying, yeah. yeah. So, 
And then for the turn server, there's a return server dot config. So that's another text file that could go into version control. So there's not a lot there. Um, okay. So after after the spam issue, are there any other issues that anyone would really like to ask about today? Uh, uh, I oh, have sorry. these uh, three things on my wish list about the XMPP. Uh, so one was spam spim and the others were um, that we installed Bibumi, the IRC uh, gateway. Mm. So I'm, I'm just now on the IRC using a Bibumi instance of another XMPP server. And the third thing is uh, just let me enable HTTP upload on okay. our server. So that's it. So those two things could be tracked through the um, the issue tracker. So you could put those in here as f uh, wish list items. Um, and those are things that I think you could probably discuss with Victor about the ongoing sort of operational support for the processes. The DSA have given access for people who manage the server to modify those configuration files. So they manage the system itself at a platform level, um, but we can manage the ProCity.cfg, we can restart that process ourselves, we can check the log files without going to DSA. Um, so you should be able to do things like enabling modules quite easily um, within the team. Um, yeah, so just while you're on the topic of IRC, um, Wookie asked me if he could join via IRC. Has anyone seen him in the IRC channel? Okay. Wookie says, I'm interested in possibility of using RTC for better remote conference attendance experience. <laughs> okay. So let's let's try that. Let's try and get the RTC. He also volunteered uh, to, to help with the RTC services, which is great. Okay. So does Wookie want to try calling in? Wookie, will you try to, to go in? Please. Uh. And if your account is not um, active because of your password change, you can try freephonebox.net and then you can dial us anonymously. So. We just give him a few moments to dial to the web RTC. Yeah. Is he? Did he comment? Or? Yeah, freephonebox.net. And he, when he gets there, he can dial pocock at debian.org. On the freephonebox.net. On this page. What's the next step? So you were able to log in here? But it, um, it's. I'm not able to register. Which browser? I'll oh, just wait for the microphone. 
Okay, so we have a call. Hello? Um, can you dial again with the webcam button? So that's latency from the streaming coming back through his um, <laughs> WebRTC. Um, so on the IRC, just ask him to click the webcam button when he dials. So not this button, but this button. So this one is audio only. And I will... Instead of, this is for audio, this button, and this button is for video. Oh, he's clicked the right one this time. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah, that delay is excessive. Can you turn off the audio from the live streaming? Wookie? This is for audio, this button. And this button is for video. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hello? Yep. Let me just check my audio. audio. Yeah. Wookie, can you hear me? He complains of the first and second degree. Are you there? Okay, we don't hear you. Can you check your... Um, if you're looking at the live stream, can you check your microphone is not down here, but if you can put it up here like this. Um, if you can, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you can let him know on the IRC that we don't hear him, so. Okay. Yeah. So he had this problem with the demo on um, on Saturday as well. Um, so we have to check if this is a browser issue, if it's my laptop, if it's the other person. But these are the types of little things that we have to deal with from time to time. So I think he just changed something. Or Wookie? Okay, so... Yeah, I can hear some feedback coming now, just very gently building up. So I don't know if he changed something or if it's on my end. Can you hear me through your headphones? Okay. So okay. So maybe we we stop the call now. Does someone else in the room want to try this? He says uh, that, that he could hear you. Okay. Bye, Wookie. Okay. Uh, okay. So and this could also be the a bandwidth issue here. Um, does anyone else want to try? Do you want to try calling me? Yeah. Five minutes, 
Okay. If you try freephonebox.net, um, who else has a recent Firefox or Chromium on their laptop? Using the latest version is a good idea. So. Okay. Hello. Yes. Who's that? Hello. Are you on the IRC? Can you say something? This is a Vitten, but V R W T I N. Mm hmm. Do you have the microphone there? Uh, okay. So we try again with um, with another call. Do you want to try now? Uh, Pocock at. Uh, uh, no, you want to go to the freephonebox.net. I'm just curious if any of the issues are bandwidth related because if it's bandwidth then this this will work through the LAN or through the yeah, Wi-Fi yeah. locally so yeah. pocock at debian.org and the turn server is better than nothing but it's not perfect it does not get us through every NAT um, Okay. Oh, you have to open the webcam. Is it all the way? Yeah. Do you see yourself? Oh, hello. Okay. So we can hear you from your desk to my desk. Okay. So, yeah, so we have one successful demonstration of the service today. So thank you, Avika. So <laughs> yes. Um, so it could well be that there's a limit on the bandwidth going through the connection into the building, or it could also be a NAT issue in the building, but we can't be sure. Um, and it could still be that other people have different browsers. Avika has only just installed the latest update of Stretch like two days ago. So everything on her laptop is the same as mine. Um, so I can't say what everyone else is running when we've done tests with them. So, But it makes a difference having the latest browser. Um, who has tried uh, Jitsi Meet? Yeah? So, so the Jitsi Meet is very easy to use. We just go to meet.jit dot si we actually create a URL so so everyone who's watching can try to join this at the same time meet dot jit dot si slash um, debconf 17 test so if everybody goes to the same URL then we should all see each other. Did you try? Okay. Uh, the, I'm not sure if it is case sensitive. Oh no, you can... Can you see me? No. Try changing it so...
Hello. Yes. Okay. okay. It's a very good question. Yeah. Um. Maybe, uh, so Wiki, uh, Wookie asked whether um, uh, why would audio not work while video works if the problem is bandwidth. Uh, yes, or net more. as well. Yeah. So, so there might be also other problems, maybe codecs or mm. I don't know. All browsers have to support the Opus codec. So it's not a simple question of not supporting the codec. Mm -hmm. um, but with the video, um, you'll notice that sometimes when it's very bad, it stops. And we just see it updating every um, second or every few seconds, like the video almost freezes. Um, but with audio, you just don't hear anything sometimes. Um, Audio should use less bandwidth than the video, um, but we need to check this problem some more. So we might do this after the session finishes. So how many people have we got in the Jitsi meet? Okay. So, so with the Jitsi meet, um, you know this is an alternative. It's not hosted by Debian. Um, but the Jitsi developers are very keen on Debian, um, and I think they run Debian themselves. Um, so this is something that people can use for multi-way uh, video calling sessions. Um, there's also some effort underway to package Jitsi Meet. So some of the low-level Java dependencies have been packaged now. Um, Irvika is working on the first package and has been studying this Pranav, who was in um, Google Summer of Code, has also been looking at some of those packages. So if anyone wants to volunteer for Java packaging, um, then Jitsi Meet would be a very exciting package to create. So, so does anyone else have any final questions before we wrap up? Okay, well, thanks everybody for coming, and thanks for the remote participants, if you can still see me. <laughs> yeah, so let's, uh, let's wrap up and go to lunch. Yeah.